Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, in 2011, AMD launched the Radeon HD7970 graphics card. At $549, sure, it was an absolute beast and could handle everyone's favourite games with respectable frame rates and high resolutions. In 2012, MSI launched one of the best 7970s money could buy, the Lightning Edition. Now this featured higher clock speeds from the factory as well as a pretty cool yellow and black looking cooler and the price well it was about the same as the reference car that had launched a year earlier. In 2013 however MSI followed up with yet another launch of a 7970 Lightning, this time named the BE or Boost Edition. Now what this car did was again make some general speed improvements and if you wanted a 7970 in early 2013, this would have been one of the ones to look out for. The clock speed was improved from 925 megahertz of the reference card to 1070 megahertz and the card also featured an 1150 megahertz boost clock as well as a 1500 megahertz memory clock. This was up from the 1400 megahertz memory clock of the previous year's Lightning Edition. So back in 2013 the unusual yellow and black design would have been enough to give you an immediate sense of curiosity and the big blue dome that stops the cars sitting flush on smooth surfaces only draws you in further. This is what MSI calls the GPU reactor. The small PCB under the blue dome helps to maintain a stable overclock. While we're on the subject of overclocking, the 7970 Lightning BE's hefty heatsink and huge fans weren't just for show. Forget the previously mentioned numbers because with some additional tweaking and the help from an old tech power-up article, I was able to get this card running with a clock speed of 1200 megahertz and a memory speed of 1750 megahertz. Maybe I could have pushed it a little more but I don't want to be responsible for breaking yet another graphics card, especially one that I plan on keeping for a while. So performance, this is a 3 gigabyte graphics card after all so that might be a limiting factor in some scenarios but don't forget that this Tahiti based beast released in March of 2013 so it's just over seven years old. Hopefully it can still give us some respectable frames today. Now some of you may be thinking, well, isn't the Ryzen 3 3100 a bit of a weak CPU to be testing this card with? And to be honest, the 3100 has plenty of power to handle this older card. The 7970, as you'll see, will be maxed out a lot of the time today. And a processor like this can easily handle something far more powerful. So I want to start with Red Dead Redemption 2 first of all. Now we tried this at 1080p with the first balanced preset which included a mixture of medium high and ultra settings with the high textures enabled instead of ultra due to the VRAM limitation. I did wonder when that would come into play. Red Dead Redemption 2 performed with about 40 frames per second which was quite surprising considering this looks very very good. I'd say it looks similar to the base console versions and runs a little bit better so there is certainly some life in the 7970 in 2020. Now if you want to achieve 60 FPS in Call of Duty Warzone, an online multiplayer title, now for online multiplayer games like this I always try and target 60 FPS because I feel it's more important in a competitive environment. Here we had to set everything to low but we did keep the texture settings at normal as the performance doesn't really change all that much. Now the footage you're seeing here is from a practice match but the figures were taken from an online game and what you see on screen here is pretty much identical to what you can expect online as well. Now we were hovering around 60 frames per second here. The game doesn't look very good at all by the way but it will run so as long as all of the other settings are turned down quite a bit. Next up I want to mention Rage 2. This is one that we haven't tested in a while on this channel but it was the most problematic game today and it was pretty much the only one that didn't run with acceptable frame rates or what I'd call acceptable frame rates anyway. We were hovering around 20 frames per second at 1080p now I'm not sure if it's the architecture of this card the current driver version or what but I do recall having some issues with Rage 2 in the past and older cards um, not necessarily this one I don't think we've tested one of these before at least not in a very long time but yeah, Rage 2 and the 7970 just did not seem to agree whatsoever and it didn't matter if we were using low or ultra settings, the frame rate 
was the same. Now in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, you should see once again 60 frames per second providing you stick to the high preset i'm not sure how much of a difference ultra would make but at 1080p high well the game seemed to run very well indeed better than i was expecting if you want to play pubg you're on a tighter budget and you can find one of these cards for a relatively good price um, I'd say maybe less than £100, dollars or euros, it may be worth considering. But just take a look at all the other options that exist out there. Take a look at the used market and see what's available to you where you live. The 7970 though, the 3 gig version is still going well. I believe there's a 6 gig version of the card out there as well. I'm not sure how much better that would perform. But bear in mind that this card is also a faster version of the traditional 3 gig variant. So... You may see even less frames if you were to opt for, say, a reference 7970 instead. This rare old beast sure is handling itself quite well so far, though. The same can be said for Fortnite, where the frame rate was even higher. Once again, 1080p with the high preset here. I played through a few online games and then combined the average, and that is the result that you see here on screen. As you can see once again, the GPU is pretty much hovering around 90 to 100% usage and the temperature really doesn't get too high, which is nice to see. There's nothing worse than an overheating graphics card to ruin your day. So in Fallout 4, I left the frame rate cap in place because removing it seems to cause some graphical glitching and 7970 had no problem in reaching it. The cap is of course 60 frames per second. Now with the ultra settings I did see a few problems. There were certainly more stutters that could be picked up by fraps but I found that the high preset was the way to go. I also turned motion blur off because I absolutely despise it but I don't think that should have any effect really on performance. It may make things look a little smoother if it's turned on but as far as the FPS figures are concerned, well, I don't think it makes much of a difference at all. Now, another result that surprised me was Far Cry 5. This should run quite similar to Far Cry New Dawn, to be honest, but Far Cry 5 is probably my favourite out of the two. Um, anyway, 1080p with the high preset once again, and you should see at least 60 frames per second when paired with this Ryzen CPU and 16 gigs of DDR4. Now, in the real world, if you are opting for a 7970, then you might decide to pair it with something a little weaker, um, perhaps an older FX series chip or an older i5 chip is probably what you'd be looking at if you were on a tighter budget anyway. I don't think you'd need something as powerful, in fact, as the Ryzen 3 3100 to get the most out of it, put it that way, because as you've seen, the GPU is running at 99 to 100% usage most of the time. I always use sort of mismatched components in the videos because I like to get the most out of all of the hardware that we test which is why I pair these older GPUs with processors that you might not otherwise pair them with. Now this final result should be of no surprise to anyone this is Grand Theft Auto 5 and at the very high preset with MSAA turned off as well as the advanced settings disabled too we saw at least 70 frames per second on average with the overclocked 7970 lightning BE GPU. As I said just now, it's not really any surprise that this game ran smoothly. It is quite old now, old as in five or six years old on the PC anyway, but you'll have a great experience if you want to play GTA with this GPU. Online is a different story. You're bound to see a few more stutters here and there, but turning the settings down to high would probably help remedy that. And to be honest, there isn't much visual difference between the two settings anyway. I mean, to be honest, with GTA Online, I get stutters with my RTX 2070 and Ryzen 5 1600 AF. So I think with this card, you're probably going to see a few problems too. It's just GTA Online. It's just what it does. But there we go. The HD7970 Lightning BE Edition is a fascinating card. It's a great looking card in my opinion. And if you can find one, well, it's certainly going to give you some decent results when it comes to gaming. It all depends on how much you can find it for, of course, where you live. But remember to take a look at your local eBay sites or Facebook selling pages because you never know what you might find. And picking up cars like this is always exciting so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it down below leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one you know i'm really not sure what i think of this dome i'm sure it helps 
maintain stability like they say but it just looks so odd and if you remove it you've just got this circle missing out of the back of the card 